Good to be back. I was watching one of Dr. Z's videos the other day. He was doing a recap on some uh, hard start kits or start capacitors, if you please. And I thought I haven't done one in a while, so I do a, a retro, if you will. My favorite ones are uh, the 521s. And you can't get these everywhere, so a lot of places just can't you can't get them. These are unlike uh, a lot of the other ones. This is actually a three-wire kit. This is actually a three-wire assembly, and I love that they put the instructions on back in case you've had a memory, a brain fart or something, for uh, if you're doing just a, a run cap, or if you have a uh, dual run cap as well. And it shows the wiring and how you put it on there. Having, uh, of course, one to hermetic, one to common on the capacitor, which leads back to uh, one side of the contactor, and this leads back to the uh, the other side, the common side of the contactor. And pretty much the same here, so it's just you're not having to worry about uh, ignoring the extra terminal. It's uh, the same basic principles. The, uh, the great thing about uh, this type is it's very similar. It's very similar to the hard start kits that you can buy from the factory. A lot of systems will leave space for a factory hard start kit, and you can actually order factory hard start kits. Now this is typically um, not necessary on a lot of systems. Usually if I'm doing a scroll compressor, if we have a scroll compressor, they'll put one on. If we're doing, an, we used to do new installs, uh, whether it was a scroll or a recip, but it had an expansion valve, we would automatically put a hard start kit on it since the, the uh, the head pressure side is technically still under pressure and you're starting it under pressure so the extra oomph from the hard start kit gives a little boost. And I'll uh, take you outside here in a minute and uh, show you something. And we've actually done a little discovery here. Uh, you can see I have uh, my regular run capacitor and I have the hard start kit, potential relay and the hard start uh, capacitor. If you look in, first thing I notice off the left side of the little round circle a little black and if you really look at the resistor the bleed resistor looks fried so I'm assuming that uh, even though I haven't put this in I can't remember how many years ago I put this in that the uh, hard start kit on it is uh, toasted at some point or has taken some other hit the system's still running fine I'm gonna check the, uh, the capacitor here I'm gonna cut the power and check the capacitor and we'll reinstall the new hard start kit which I have in the house and I uh, always buy two of everything when I get a chance for my own system and uh, then we will do a little test run an amp draw and everything but uh, you can see here that uh, the wiring coming down here from the kit we have the hermetic and we have the common going up here and we have the uh, the, the L2 or L1 whichever you prefer to call it coming back over here by itself so we have it leads you to follow the red up here, goes over there, comes over here, charges from this side here, and this is the common or return size, we'll call it for now, which goes back over here, uh, according to the instructions. So we'll do some testing, and I'll pop the that off. Power plug we'll back in the new hard start kit installed, but uh, it's not wired up yet. I have um, my fuel piece set to amperage, and I'm going to push max. See, it's locked down on max there. I want to see what kind of starting amperages we get on the thing when uh, we have no hard start involved. So that's not bad at all. That's pretty light, actually. And it locks on, so even though you shut off the unit, it's showing 15 amp start up, which is pretty reasonable, actually. Uh, so technically, I don't even need a hard start kit on this unit. A lot of times you'll use hard start kits um, if it's not on a new system that requires it or expansion valve. Sometimes you can go out to a house that uh, is pulling kind of high amps. Maybe it's an older system and you have the lights dimming a little bit and it'll help uh, ease up the load on starting. Sometimes you'll have, uh, it's a stop gap. A uh, customer may not be able to afford a new unit and the compressor just is not starting even though the capacitor is good it's trying but it's not starting and sometimes you can put on a good hard start kit 
and uh, it'll put off enough torque um, to, to actually get the compressor to run and it might last a week, might last five years, it's hard to say. Um, I like the three wire kits better than some of the other ones. If you'll watch some of the other guys' videos, they show some different ones and and uh, do some comparisons and I don't have any um, I don't have the page handy because one of the guys did a great job on doing some comparisons on the different ones. But uh, that's it. I'm going to wire this up and uh, fire it up here and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks uh, thanks for watching this little bit. Next thing a bit, we will uh, get it up and running and once I, I get the wires in, to I have the new uh, hard start kit in. See the nice, crisp, clean uh, resistor, dropping resistor on there. And uh, we're going to give it a shot here. I have my meter already set to max and hold and pardon my uh, shaky hands. Let me get the screwdriver on the contact. Remember this is technicians only. And fire it up. And we have 13.8 which tells me that even though the dropping resistor was fried on that the hard start kit was still functional. But uh, nonetheless Nonetheless, it did something because you can see the leak out on there on the capacitor. You can see the uh, resistor is fried. So, rather, uh, rather interesting. So it was doing something, but the system's in good shape, and obviously there's no load on it, so it's just starting up and running pretty good. They could probably not even have a hard start kit on here because of the uh, the test run we did. Uh, well, actually, I didn't test it with just that plugged in. I tested it with nothing on there. Now the hard start kit, and it's dropping not what not much an amp. But a lot of times you'll start, uh, you'll check a system, an older system that might pull 30, 40 amps with a hard start kit not there, and you put the hard start kit on and drop it down. and takes a lot of load off the system. So I put one on because I wanted to put one on. But, uh, or like I said, uh, quite often... If uh, if you have an expansion valve, uh, usually on new installs, most companies will put uh, a hard start kit in the system. Not always, but most times uh, they'll put a hard start kit in. You know, if you have a scroll compressor and uh, an expansion valve, and expansion valve is holding head pressure, it's a lot easier on the compressor. If uh, if you have a hard start kit, less less amp draw on on the motor and. Uh, a little easier to go. Anyway, there you go. Um, I will update you kids on my back stuff later. Uh, it's it's uh, an exciting two days, and I'll be doing this for about a week, a test run on my back. But anyway, uh, that's it for today on the hard start kit stuff. All the rest of the wiring looked pretty good. A little wear on the, uh, the contactor, but not too bad. I think I changed that out about two years ago. And I'm going to put the cover back on and go in the house and fire it up, and we'll be good to go.